This is the lab for momentum, energy, and collisions. Okay, so the materials you'll need for this lab, of course, are the instructions. And we've printed out a blank data table uh, for you to record your data in. So you don't write in this. This is what you write on. You'll need a lab quest, of course. And if it's not charged up, a power source. Uh, you'll need your motion detector and the cable that connects it to the LabQuest. Of course, the connector is the one with this connection on both ends of the cable. Uh, you'll need your uh, dynamics cart track. And inside the long rectangular white box are your two dynamics carts. Uh, each cart should have Velcro on them, one rough and one soft, so that when you do the collision on the track, they stick together with the Velcro. At uh, the far end of the uh, track, you attach your motion detector. There's a little silver uh, bolt that sticks out of there that goes into the hole and then that should allow the motion uh, detector, the screw in hole to line up and you screw that in like that so it looks like this and that slides in to the end of the track right here and then you can if it doesn't go all the way in, just move the legs of the track out of the way, like that. And you can slide it all the way up, lift this up, and your motion detector is ready to go. Then, you'll also need a 500 gram weight. It is in your cardboard box. This is what it looks like. Take the weight, it fits onto the cart like this. And to secure it on the cart, you'll need one long bolt like this. And these screw in to each other like that. So you place the bolt into the track like that. Slide it on. Put the weight onto the screw. And then this screws on to the top. and now it is secure. That's how you attach the weight to your cart. Okay, so you're going to perform this experiment uh, three different ways. The first way is both carts uh, have equal mass and you uh, cl click to start your data collection and then gently give the first cart a push. It'll collide and stick Make sure they stick with the Velcro to each other so that it's a perfectly inelastic collision. That's one way you'll do it. You'll do three trials of that. Then you'll attach your 500 gram mass to the colliding to the cart that is uh, colliding into the uh, stationary cart. This cart will always be at rest initially. Record your data. Give this one a push. And then you're going to repeat the experiment, but now the time, uh, this time, the cart that gets hit has the 500 gram mass on it. And start your collection, give it a push. Okay, so those are the three experiments you'll do. You do three trials of each experiment. And remember using the white data table uh, for both carts being empty. The striking cart having 500 uh, grams and the cart being struck having 500 grams. Those are your data tables to fill those in. Let's take a look at what your data should look like. So I'll start my data collection, push the cart, give it a tap, it runs into the second cart and your graph, when I zoom in, It 
it should show two very distinct regions of uh, velocity, which is the slope of position time. Or if you look at your velocity graph, you see I have a region here that corresponds to the velocity of this section and a region here that corresponds to the velocity of this section. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter which one you use. You can either take the slope of this or you can take the average value of this. This little spike may be not desirable. It's very easy to take the data again. I would probably opt to redo that one and get my velocity before the collision of the first cart. The second cart, of course, is initially at rest. And then the velocity of the two carts together after the collision, either taking my velocity value from this graph or the slope of my position time graph. The mass of the cart, of course, measure with the scale.